So the, the noon edition from uh, ABA Tech Show 2016 in Chicago overlooking Lake Michigan. I'm Dennis Kennedy, uh, in-house counsel at MasterCard, uh, blogger, podcaster, author on legal technology topics, and I'm here with Adriana Linares. Hey, Dennis, thanks. Yes, I'm Adriana Linares. I'm a legal technology trainer and consultant. This year, I'm the vice chair of the ABA Tech Show, and I'm really excited to be here. It's our 30th anniversary, and this has been a dream that Dennis and I have had for 10 years about uh, having some live videos. So thanks for joining us. We hope you pick up a couple of useful and fun tips. I've invited a first time attendee and a dear friend of mine named Barbara Leach to, uh, to join us and talk about her. Hi, good morning. Tell everybody kind of where you work and what you do. Oh, I am from Orlando, Florida. I have my own firm. I do family law, consumer bankruptcy. Excellent. Yeah. So it's your first time. It is. Tell us about your morning. Oh, it's been fantastic. I actually wish it had started earlier. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. No one else does. <laughs> no, there's just so many sessions and so many opportunities. Um, you know, Tech Show has this really great app where you can go and plan your schedule. And I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse, but I really wanted to sign up for three 9 o'clock sessions and about two 10 o'clock <laughs> sessions. And it let me. So I've got all these check marks, <laughs> but obviously cannot go to all of them. That's great. Well, so what have you seen? I have seen a presentation today that involved using videos oh, okay. and podcasts in your firm in terms of starting to establish an electronic presence that is more than just you meeting someone face to face. So is this creating compelling content, podcasts and videos? Yes, it was. And that was by Adam Cameras, our very own from the Legal Talk Network, and Tom Mile, who happens to be your co-host on your blog. Yes. I mean, on your... Um, on our podcast. Podcast. And I was in the audience as well. What so kind of tips did you guys pick up? Well, number one, that you can easily create a YouTube channel. And there was a lady who shared, uh, actually the, the moderator shared that she's had a, a YouTube video that's seen like 400,000 views Wow! that she had just created herself. And she's a lawyer. Yes. So Catherine the, Sanders Reach. Oh, it was Catherine. Yeah. And so the goal of having that platform for lawyers mm -hmm. would be exposure, brand awareness. What, what, kind of, what kind of things did they tell you would be useful for something like this? Well, they said that it, it, it would be useful to do that because it's an opportunity when people are shopping around on the Internet, you know, trying to find a lawyer at 10 o'clock at night in their pajamas, that they can actually see a video to gain content or knowledge and at the same time establish a connection, albeit ephemeral, with a lawyer who they might be, might be interested in hiring. Yeah, that's great. What did you pick up as a tip? I, well, you're kind of a pro, but well, make a couple up. Well, th <laughs> I think the YouTube channel thing was was a, an important uh, issue. Uh, uh, I thought there was it brought back memories when they talk about doing your own podcast because Tom and I did the first six episodes ourselves, and I remember going through and removing all the ums and uhs and all those sorts of things, which now are taken care of uh, for us. But that would add like an hour or two of post-production uh, but the result was really worth it so you can have the professional sound and I think for lawyers especially the audio game and podcasting is very high and NPR has set a high standard as well so you really need to do that and I thought the discussion and I'm interested in, in your comments on this too I thought the discussion about whether to go get professional help was also really useful well, what I liked uh, how they handled it is that they, they said, here are the things you have to think about before you even start. And uh, kind of like, you know, uh, come up with your plan. Who's your audience? What's your theme? And I love that they planted those seeds in my mind before even going forward, floundering as I am wont to do. And so as it goes to your specific point, I love the idea of, it was a concept I had never entertained doing a podcast or even doing video, but it was a wonderful spectrum that, hey, you can do it on the cheap and easy and quick. It does not have to be an elaborate production if you don't have the money or the time. So that made it approachable and something that I might be actually taking home and considering, although I, it really wasn't something on my radar. And one of the reasons I selected that session to begin with is I thought, well, maybe this is something that should be on my radar. I, I didn't expect to walk away from it jazzed, but I really am. 
Well, and you're, you're, you're a unique conference attendee because that is what happens to you. The last conference you went to, she, you, she went fully engaged and she said, I'm going to go learn some stuff, which is kind of weird, right? And I don't mean it's weird, but lawyers don't go gung-ho every time to some of these conferences. And, but that's what Barbara does. So she I'm kind of weird. Gung-ho to the last. And she came back to her law firm and implemented several new tools and tips and workflows from that. So it's great. Having attendees like you at conferences like this is really um, enlightening and it means a lot to us who help put it on because that's that's what we want to hear. I went to a great session and I actually dragged Barbara. I texted Barbara and I said, where are you? Come to this other room. So I was at the Future of Law Services, expanding legal access to justice and improve client services through technology. And this was an amazing session. So it was uh, William Hubbard, who's the immediate past president of the ABA, joined by Ray Abedin, who's the current Florida Bar president. And what happened is a couple weeks ago, William Hubbard emailed us and said, hey, you know, I think it'd be much more interesting and enlightening for attendees if instead of me just standing up there talking, there was someone else that I could interact with and ask questions to. Do you know of anybody? And I thought, I do. Because the president of the Florida Bar is going to be here, and they are sort of on the same sheet of music when it comes to a lot of their topics. And it was amazing. The room was packed. There were people standing in the back. And it's not the biggest room. Um, we should have given him the biggest room. He, sorry. Uh, and it was just a great conversation about how the profession is changing, and a lot of it being based on outside forces, um, outside companies that are, that are well-funded, and not necessarily stuff that's bubbling from inside the profession, but stuff that's happening and then pressing upon the profession. Barbara, did you pick up any interesting notes or points from that discussion? I know you were, came in a little late, but... What I loved about it, actually, was it, it wasn't just a conversation between the two of them. Yeah. It really was a conversation in the whole room. And to the point of where some of the uh, speakers, uh, some of the attendees were saying, I'd like to respond to that person's question over there that had been asked actually before I walked into the room. And what I took away from that was that there were people in the room who were already engaged in the conversation, mm -hmm. who were forward thinkers, forward lookers. What's the impact on our, uh, you know, our profession? But at the same time, there were skeptics in the room who did not appreciate the message that either of the presenters were sharing, but yet respectful of the conversation. Yeah. So I feel like they, they mentioned, you know, moving the needle in a direction that, that there were a few people who walked away from it changed no. somewhat it's great. sort of like the connecting the dots notion i think that that i really like about tech shows so that's the type of se section where you could say i learned some basic technology and it sort of sits in its own silo this is saying okay so what happens when i take it outside what are the conversations and oh, wait other people are having those same conversations and it's always been said other than your sessions of course that the best content at any conference is what happens in the hallway conversations. Right. And that's the type of session that I can easily see people talking about at dinner tonight or mm -hmm. as, as we sit around this, e this evening and over the next couple of days saying, wait, I saw these other things, these other sessions, and it feeds in to what is the bigger picture and what are we doing for clients and what is the, the role of the client in the, in the technology that we, we introduce. What I, the way I like to look at it is that's the future of legal technology on a macro level. Now, I literally just came out of a session where we were strategizing email management. To me, that's technology, legal technology on a micro level. And I love the fact that just in the span of two hours, I've been exposed to big picture issues with really the, the legal futurists in America and then at the same time, I'm having a conversation about the Pomodoro technique. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what session was that? That was the, uh, what was that? That was the time, task, email, and distraction management. Tame the digital chaos with Paul Unger. Oh, and it was with Paul, who's amazing. Fantastic. Right. Okay, so what were some of the email management tips he gave you? Well, he said that, um, you know, that when you, you have three minutes to look at an email, you decide if you're going to delete, delegate, do or delay 
And he came up with this really great strategy as far as delegation goes, creating, if you use Outlook, creating an Outlook rule whereby any time you send an email where you've copied yourself on it, it gets saved in a delegated task folder so that you can circle back to that folder and see if it was actually completed. Huh. Love that idea. There's tons of good tips I'm sure that he could give. Um, I happen to give a couple of good tips too during my session. I just did a security session, uh, security phishing and awareness with Sherry Davidoff, who's an amazing and very cool security specialist. She kind of looks like a punk rocker. Awesome. Which is refreshing and really neat around here. And man, does she know her stuff. She was telling some great and amazing stories. And of course, one of the things that we focused on is that many phishing attacks and malware attacks come through inboxes, through email. And it's very important, and we talked about this, that everybody go back and not just learn how to avoid clicking on links or opening attachments that are going to be malicious, but training your staff on how to do that as well. And one of the tips that I give, not just for this, but for email management purposes, is that you should have more than one email address. It's, it, you should have multiple email addresses, and I'll give you one quick example as to why. So my main email address for work, I really only hand out to my colleagues, to coworkers, to people that I have to communicate with on a regular basis. I joke around that my mother does not even know my work email address. And it's not a joke, she actually doesn't. I have a separate email address where that is where my American Express card, Bank of America, my car bills, that's where my mom, this whole other world of emails, not only does it keep those distracting emails from coming into my inbox, which I also have seen many lawyer inboxes and I know there's usually 6,000 emails in there and 4,000 of them are unopened. So for me, managing email is um, being able to also silo the types of emails that you're getting, work, personal, and maybe you know something in the middle. But um, on top of that, one of the things that happens is when I get an email from American Express that my card has been compromised and I should go log on to my American Express account, when that email lands in my work email, which I protect like it's my social security number, I know it's spoof. I know it's spam. I know it's junk because American Express has no idea that that email out there exists. Some hacker, spammer found it or got lucky and, you know, you know, just guessed an email address that worked. So email management, I think, is definitely a great um, topic that we often have here at TechShow and can be so helpful for many, many people. What are your plans for this afternoon? Oh, well, again, I have like eight different sessions that I want to go to in a, a two-hour time frame. But I'm actually looking forward to spending time at the exhibitor hall. Oh, yes. Great. It's, it's, there's so many here. And what I love about it is having my own practice that I feel like these vendors are really here to answer my questions and that they're actually products that I might or might not be interested in. And once I learn a little bit more about them, I can say, you know what? I don't need to know anything more about this. It doesn't apply to my practice area. Move on to the next. Exactly. Vendor. Right. We have 120 vendors down there and they are all super nice, very engaged, definitely looking to, to get a chance to talk to any lawyer who's interested in, in their products or doesn't know what their product is and is willing to hear about it. And what about Dan Berlin of Tabs? Oh. All 30 tech shows that he's been an exhibitor at so uh, with his company. Isn't so that amazing? <laughs> Dan Berlin with Tabs has been here for 30 years. It's amazing. So I got the chance to talk to him a little bit last night about you know what they're doing, but also talking about the early years and, and how few companies are still around that Have were that there in the, in, yeah, so it's, uh, so there's a lot of great stories here all the time. So people are always like, oh, I'm afraid to go on the exhibit floor because people are going to come out and attack me and try to make me buy stuff. <laughs> like and it's, you know, and it's like, no, it's a great way to, to, uh, to meet people, to, to learn about something, to say, oh, I didn't even know this whole category of software even existed. Yes, so. and we definitely thank our vendors, all of them, for being here because they help make the show possible. Um, and affordable, really. I mean, we'd have to charge a whole lot more if we didn't have them. So with that, I think we'll wrap up this session and hope to see everyone later. Uh, five o'clock, we'll be back for another episode of Tech Show Today. I'm Adriana Linares. And I'm Dennis Kennedy. And I'm Barbara Leach. See you next time.